Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Unvaccinated versus vaccinated. Prime Minister's declaration on how persons will be treated. Not enough. MAJ weighs in on revised COVID-19 measures. And later in sports, Reggae Boy slipped nine places in the September edition of the FIFA rankings to 59th in the world. I'm Anthony Lugg. Here are the details. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has given the clearest indication yet that unvaccinated Jamaicans will be treated differently from those who have taken the COVID-19 vaccine. Mr. Holness made the comments as he addressed Parliament last evening. The Prime Minister has stated that the government does not plan to institute vaccine mandates. But speaking last evening in Parliament, Mr. Holness revealed that the country could be inching closer to treating the vaccinated group differently from those who are yet to get the jab. Eventually, it will evolve into a system where we will have to have differential treatment for persons who are vaccinated versus persons who are not. And we have seen that emerge. He noted that some countries require persons to present vaccination cards to enter establishments such as nightclubs and restaurants. Mr. Holness said unvaccinated persons should not be allowed to benefit without playing a part in ending the pandemic. It can't be that I get vaccinated. I do my national duty and get vaccinated to protect myself, my family, my community and my country. And someone who shirks their responsibility and duties, sometimes for no genuine reason other than pure ignorance and deliberate, you know, malicious intent gets to go by on a free ride. Some countries have implemented vaccine mandates as a way of getting more people inoculated. There have been calls for Jamaica to do the same. There are many calls now being made for vaccine mandates. And I've long said that, you know, we have a liberal democracy. In the meantime, Mr. Holness argued that his focus remains on getting as many Jamaicans vaccinated. With 7% vaccination, the national effort, the national attention, the national focus must be on increasing vaccination. These measures cannot change. The Medical Association of Jamaica has been reacting to the new COVID-19 measures announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Wednesday. Shamela Pullen has the details. Among the measures outlined by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Wednesday is that there will be no more weekday, no movement days except on National Heroes Day on Monday, October 18, 2021. Sundays are no movement days. The curfew will also move to 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. on Wednesdays. The curfew will begin at 6 p.m. on Saturdays. The new measures take effect on September 18. Most other measures will remain in place under the government's Disaster Risk Management Act. But President of the Medical Association of Jamaica, Dr. Andrew Manning, says more information from the Minister of Health on the revised measures is needed. Dr. Manning says the previous restrictions, which included the three lockdown days, are needed. He says this could have continued until vaccination levels were increased or COVID cases declined. He asserts that the next 14 days will be critical for assessment on whether the measures need to change. The authorities are going to be paying very close attention to what is happening um, within the next two weeks to see if any further adjustments need to be made. In fact, I would love to hear or would want to hear from the technical people in the Ministry of Health so that we could see exactly what parameters um, we are looking at that would have led to a suggestion that we could ease the restrictions at this time. And Dr. Manning highlighted other reasons why the measures could have remained in place. Until you achieve a positivity rate of about 5% and sustain that for two weeks, coupled with that is the fact that we have 760 COVID persons hospitalized, and that is far in excess of our normal capacity. And we still have a very low rate of vaccination. Part of the concern that we have is we had seen recently how ill-equipped we have been to deal with a significant surge in terms of finding beds, in terms of meeting with the demands for oxygen. 
So this is something we're very concerned about, and we hope that the authorities are going to be paying very close attention to what is happening um, within the next two weeks to see if any further adjustments need to be made. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. Filling gaps in Jamaica's healthcare system. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says that's the long-term benefit of field hospitals, which are currently being used as isolation areas for COVID patients. He was speaking at yesterday's official opening of one of those facilities at the Maypen Hospital in Clarendon. Krista Campbell was there. From a promise in May to a reality in September, the Maypen Hospital in Clarendon has a field hospital to treat suspected and COVID positive patients. Now, COVID hospitalizations are not as bad here as at other public hospitals, but the CEO says the cases keep rising. Our patient count is 215 to date. We have a bed uh, occupancy of um, 170. From that, we have 47 positive cases, and we are seeing 17 support patients presently on iFlow nasal cannula machine. So those patients um, would be more seen as critical. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton was at Wednesday's official opening of the 850,000 U.S. dollar field hospital, which is the second to be donated to Jamaica by the U.S. government. None of our hospitals are, were fully equipped or equipped at all to deal with what is here. And uh, the timing of the pandemic and its impact on us required us to evolve in terms of a plan and a strategy to add capacity as we went along, whether it's human capacity, infrastructure capacity, equipment capacity. Now it will be a little while longer before the first set of patients start using the field hospital. It is separated into two areas, one for the suspected and one here for positive. In the positive area, we have approximately 28 beds. And for the suspected here, we have 12 beds. Meanwhile, work on bathroom facilities behind the field hospital is expected to be done by month end. It includes separate bathrooms for staff, suspected COVID patients, as well as those who test positive. From the Maypen Hospital in Clarendon, I'm Krista Campbell for TVJ News. And it's now time for a break, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to Midday News and thanks for staying with us. A backlog of reports on COVID-19 deaths and test results may be compromising the country's grasp of the scale of the COVID-19 crisis. Sandy Williams tells us more. Speaking at a recent COVID-19 press briefing, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie explained that delayed reports from hospitals coupled with the turnaround time for investigations into the deaths are the reasons for the backlog. We may get a death reported but we don't have enough information to be able to classify the death as to whether it is a COVID death or it is a coincidental death, meaning that the person died of some other reason but coincidentally has, has a COVID positive test. So we, it does take a little time sometimes to, to get that investigation done. To date, the country has recorded more than 1,700 deaths due to COVID-19. If we are having deaths reported over a week or two or even months in some instance, you can't capture the true picture of what is happening at any particular time. So plan accordingly. When asked if there's also a backlog of COVID-19 test results, Dr. Bisesa McKenzie gave this response. I am not at this present time aware that we are having more than the 48 hour turnaround time in terms of test results in the public sector. But now that you have bring it to attention, we will investigate. I have not had the reports, so we'll investigate and find out if there is any new problem. While insisting that the results can be garnered in 24 to 48 hours, Dr. Bisesa McKenzie admits that the human resource at some health facilities is a challenge. 
Former Senior Medical Officer of the Savannah Lamar Hospital, Dr. Alfred Dawes, says with the presence of the Delta variant on the island, a backlog of COVID test results could have grave implications on individuals, communities, and on a national level. Normally, when somebody is tested positive, you want to have contact tracing. And if you are letting someone out in the community with a week to move around without knowing that they are COVID positive and being in isolation, then you're exposing far more persons than if you had that that uh, result in, in, in a short period of time. And on a national level, the, the third way in which this is impactful is that you are losing control of uh, the, the, the pandemic because you cannot tell exactly what is your reproductive rate, what is your positivity rate, at any particular point, you're always some time behind. And then if you have a dump of results on a, on a day, you may have a lot of positives coming in that may not be a true reflection of what is taking place in terms of the trend of the pandemic. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Another senior parish court judge has died from COVID-19, this time from St. Elizabeth. Horace Mitchell reportedly died at the Mandeville Regional Hospital this morning. During the opening of the Home Circuit Court for the McKelmas term, Director of Public Prosecution Paula Llewellyn made the announcement. His death comes almost one month after the passing of former senior parish judge for St. Anne, Stanley Clark. May I, on behalf of my office, offer my condolence to you, Chief Justice, and your colleague on the passing of Mr. Stanley Clark a parish court judge and on the passing of parish court. The country's positivity rate and COVID hospitalizations have dipped in the last 24 hours. 726 people are hospitalized with COVID-19, down from 760 on Tuesday. 52 patients are critically ill while 94 are severely ill. There are 25,334 active cases on the island. On Wednesday, Jamaica recorded 495 new COVID-19 cases from 1,349 test samples. The overall case count now stands at 77,989. The positivity rate is now 33.7%. Meanwhile, 11 more people have died from the virus between September 6 and 13. Seven of the deaths were previously under investigation. The death toll is now 1,768. The government is facing the heat over the delays in the tablet distribution program through members of parliament. The government has accepted responsibility for the delays, but the opposition is demanding a timeline for when the devices will be delivered. The Education Ministry has been on a drive to improve device access among students across the island and though there have been several tablet distribution initiatives, hundreds remain without a device. The government previously announced that it will be providing each member of parliament with tablets for distribution in their constituency, but it's understood that's yet to happen. Opposition spokesperson on education, Dr. Angela Brown-Burke, raised the issue in parliament on Wednesday. Minister, it is not just that they have not been delivered. I have not even been able to get a proper response about why the delay went to expect it. So when parents come into my office now, as I'm doing back to school, when parents come into my office now as I'm doing back to school, I don't even know what to tell them. Education Minister Favor William indicated that the government has been working to have the tablets delivered to MPs but there have been challenges. Um, we take full responsibility for the lateness in that. Um, sometimes our procurement process doesn't work exactly the way we, we think or want it to work. So I, I want to publicly apologize to all the MPs that we were not able to, to bring this to them before the start of the school. But we're working on ensuring that you get those 100 devices each as quickly as possible. I really need something more specific than as soon as possible. Is it likely to be October, November, December? Because parents are asking us, we can't answer. They may need to make alternative arrangements in terms of trying to acquire the devices independent of, of this situation. So while I understand your challenges, 
I would really hope that you can tell us something more specific so that we can communicate. In terms of the 100 devices, uh, we are expecting that by October, early October, we will be able to um, deliver on that. There were also questions about the timeline for the return of face-to-face -face classes for children under 12 years. Mrs. Williams says discussions with the health ministry are ongoing. We can only ready ourselves and be prepared in terms of the physical environment, the teachers, the content, and so on, so that um, once that happens, we're not scrambling to get back. Anthony Log, TVJ News. And for the latest in the world of business, here's Cody and Barrett with the Business Minute. The Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ, officially launched its $3 billion social and economic recovery program on Wednesday. Minister of Finance Dr. Nigel Clark said the program is geared towards providing financial support to small and medium-sized enterprises that have been affected by the pandemic. This is a direct collaboration joint venture between the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service and the DBJ in the form of a loan from the Ministry of Finance to the DBJ, which would have been a part of our budgetary uh, approvals from Parliament earlier in this year. And in business internationally, U.S. consumer prices increased 0.3% in August, the smallest increase in seven months, and a hopeful sign that a recent jump in inflation may be cooling. The August gain was weaker than the 0.5% increase in July and a 0.9% surge in June. It was the smallest increase since prices rose 0.3% in January. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And it's now time for the top regional and international news. Here's O'Shane Masters. In the region, no country in the Caribbean region is close to herd immunity. According to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, as of September 3, vaccine coverage in the community ranged from 58.7% in Bermuda to 0.1% in Haiti. The CARICOM leaders expressed dismay at the rate of vaccination in the 15-member grouping and the significant incidence of vaccine hesitancy. It's why CARICOM leaders met in a special emergency meeting virtually on Monday to consider a regional response. However, no official statement has yet been released by the Guyana-based CARICOM Secretariat regarding the outcome of the deliberations. Since the onset of the pandemic, more than 6,700 deaths have been recorded in the Caribbean. Further overseas, Four former Minneapolis police officers are pleading not guilty to charges stemming from the George Floyd case. Derek Chauvin, To Taw, J. Alexander Keong, and Thomas Lane were arraigned on federal civil rights charges on Tuesday. Chauvin is accused of depriving Floyd of the right to be free from unreasonable seizure and unreasonable force by a police officer. Tao and Keong are accused of failing to intervene in the case. All four ex-officers are also charged with failing to give Floyd medical aid. Federal trial dates have not yet been set. And that's it for the top regional and international stories. I'm Shane Masters. Head now to a quick break. When we return, we'll have your midday sports report. Simon Preston is standing by. Welcome back. It's now time for midday sports. I'm Simon Preston. The Reggae Boys slipped nine places in the September edition of the FIFA rankings to 59th in the world. Jamaica's fall comes after losses to Mexico and Panama in the CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers recently. This is the first time Jamaica is outside of the top 50 since July 2019. Jamaica has also slipped from 4th in the region to 5th as Canada has moved up to 4th in CONCACAF. Mexico continues to lead in CONCACAF at 9th in the world, followed by the United States at 13th and Costa Rica at 44th. The Reggae Boys will next face the USA, Canada and Honduras in World Cup qualifying on October 7, 10 and 13 respectively. The top 10 ranked teams in the world reads Belgium, Brazil, England, France, Italy, Argentina, Portugal, Spain, Mexico and Denmark. Now after a long and successful campaign at the Olympic Games and on the Diamond League circuit, double Olympic champion Helene thompson Hira has returned home. The 29-year-old arrived on the island on Wednesday for the first time since she historically defended her 100 and 200 meter titles at the Olympic Games. thompson Hira says her next objective is to claim a World Championship gold medal. Everything is planned in my mind right now. I'm not... I'm not being shy from nothing, no. I'm, I'm going for everything. So once I'm healthy, 
I'm just going to give it my all and I've not yet get a title, a um, material championship, and that, that's definitely in my book to work towards that. And it's going to be a tight three years, but I think I can do it. Everybody can do it. We have done it before. So we're just going for it and take it year by year. Now it's sports time, South Africa women had reached 155 for six after 45 overs against West Indies women in the fourth one day international at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in Antigua. South Africa leads the five match series 3-0. The West Indies is using this series in preparation for the World Cup qualifiers in Zimbabwe in November. Newly appointed coach of Jamaica's Rugby Sevens team, Waisala Serevi, feels the national team has the potential to be a tier one contender in the future. Serevi held his first training session with the team on Thursday and was impressed by what he saw. I believe uh, the Jamaica Sevens team, the players that I've seen the last couple of days, they are good athletes, they are fast, they are strong, and uh, from my point of view, if coached properly, if trained properly, they can be a force to reckon they will be a team to watch in the next couple of years. The man who is hailed as the king of sevens is preparing Jamaica for the World Rugby Sevens series, which kicks off on Saturday. And that is it for your midday sports report. I'm Simon Preston. Anthony, it is over to you. All right, thank you very much, Simon. And before we go, a reminder of our top story. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has signaled that the government is seeking and looking at differential uh, treatment for those who are vaccinated. And that's the Midday News. I'm Anthony Lugg. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.